Hello everyone, my name is TARDIS Girl and welcome to my channel. A few weeks ago, which is practically eons ago in the YouTube timeline, one of my favourite creators, Nando V Movies, called Film Channels to Action to talk about their favourite scene from the Fox's X-Men films in a series called One Excellent Scene. Now I know this is terribly, horribly late, and there is no way I can qualify to sit at the popular kids' table. Because, come on, lessons from the screenplay and OSP? I'm so far out of their league. But I did want to make this video for fun, as one of my favourite scenes in all of X-Men comes from probably the worst X-Men film. X-Men Apocalypse. We've had so many terrible X-Men films at this point that it's hard to categorise where X-Men Apocalypse should stand. Is it worse than Wolverine Origins? Better than The Last Stand? How does a lifeless blue villain and a cast of superfluous side characters compare to a lifeless blonde villain and a cast of superfluous side characters? Well, I don't care. I want to talk about it. Because even though I will admit this film has some truly terrible flaws, there are some really good moments to talk about. Some of them may even be excellent. So join me as I break down my favourite scene from the Fox's X-Men saga, Jean's Nightmare from X-Men Apocalypse. The scene opens right after Apocalypse has been awakened, and a global shockwave has just made Magneto reveal his powers by saving a fellow workman. The previous scene ended on a tense note, and this moment opens with a shot that is equally tense. We see Xavier inside the X-Mansion, telling the students not to worry and to just go back to their beds. At first, we think they are reacting to the same threat that we have just witnessed. They are worried about the ground shaking. But then, the perspective is shifted as we suddenly realise they are blaming the quake on another source. On Jean. The words, she's doing it again, and I've never seen it like this, instantly convey that Jean has been making strange things happen for a long time, but never to this extent. Xavier's line, Don't let any of the children come this way instantly increases the tension of the moment. We don't know if Jean is dangerous or not in this film, but we also don't know how the other children feel about Jean at this point. Will they judge her? Fear her? Turn against her? Is she already a figure of menace in this school? All of this instantly directs the audience to sympathise with Jean. Xavier enters Jean's room, and instantly we have some of the most evocative imagery of the film. The scene is shot with a dark blue monochromatic lighting, a world away from the warm golden light that we see in the school corridors. Brian Singer named this the exorcist scene in the audio commentary, because yeah, in this scene we get treated to some pretty freaky stuff. We see that Jean is causing her bedroom walls to dissolve, a power similar to the one we saw her utilise in X-Men The Last Stand. However, that was a moment at the height of her phoenix force and done with malicious intention. The fact that this power is being used unconsciously while she's asleep makes it even more frightening, making us imagine the untapped power she must have behind those sleeping eyes. The scene continues and plays on our associations with the earlier films. We see Xavier approaching the bed, similarly to the scene with Rogue and Logan in the first X-Men movie. Even the way he tries to wake her up is similar, quietly whispering her name. Already we have a sinking feeling that something dangerous is going to happen, given the way Logan's nightmare ended in the first film and what happened to Rogue. Already we are fearing for both Jean and Xavier. The scene turns sinister as Jean's voice distorts, echoing and sounding as though she is deep underwater. <laughs> The distorted echoes immediately indicate that Jean's nightmare is having some mental toll on Xavier as he writhes in pain. The shots are extreme close-ups, forcing us to look at the characters. While this would normally create intimacy, the fact that they are both scared and in pain creates a sense of helplessness that the audience perceives as horrifying. Then suddenly, we are catapulted into Jean's dream. Scenes of destruction all cut together and edited so quickly in a blur of tiny moments. One shot of Apocalypse serves as visual foreshadowing, but the rest is mostly abstract. We see scenes of destruction, buildings burning, moments that were actually clipped and edited from the Hiroshima scene in The Wolverine. The imagery of disintegration links us again to Jean's threatening power, suggesting that she might be a part of this destruction. The sound design and colour palette makes this scene all the more uncomfortable. The sequence is coloured with an intense dichotomy, dark blue and red, the colour of fire, destruction, blood, pain, and possibly the phoenix force. The way the shots and colours flip, 
with one second Xavier's face is shown in blue shadow and the next in red, indicates the violent mental battle that is taking place, as if Jean and Xavier are ricocheting between each other's mental plane. The sound mixing gives a sense of physical pain. Some of the distortions sound like a plunge deep into water, others like a punch in the gut, others like the shockwave from an explosion. scenes continue faster and faster and faster, with Xavier's desperate voice yelling Jean's name until she finally wakes up, closing this section of the dream sequence with her name screamed in fear. It is arguable that this scene stands out as one of the few character moments directed at Jean Grey in this film. Admittedly, she is nowhere near as developed as she should be, not until Dark Phoenix anyways, but it is a start. Furthermore, the scene is unique by showing a new side to the relationship between Charles and Jean. We've already seen his authoritative presence as a teacher when he is reassuring students in the halls, but this is the first time we have seen him acting as a mentor and a father figure towards Jean. In X-Men, all the way through to the X-Men The Last Stand, we rarely have any moments of dialogue or conversation between Jean and Professor X. Their relationship appears similar to old friends or a teacher and a student. The closest thing we have to an emotional reaction is in The Last Stand, when Xavier is giving Logan his explanation of the feeling Force, but the fact he is talking so detachedly about Jean's childhood makes the scene feel cold and removed. There is little affection, no pride or worry for a student that he has been a mentor to for so long. Again, all of this was expanded upon in Dark Phoenix, but it is in this scene that we actually get our first snapshot of the bond they have together. Admittedly, the scene is not so visually dynamic once the nightmare ends, as the next few moments exist mainly as a conversation. However, both the dialogue and the camera work creates a sense of isolation and intimacy, that Jean and the Professor are off in their own little world in this scene. In fact, it's easy to forget that Hank is still present, as there are only a few shots that cut back to him. Jean starts the dialogue with, I saw the end of the world. I could feel all this death. Xavier's next line is very telling. It was just a dream. In the trailer, the scene is edited to come off as reassuring. I could feel all this death. Jean, it was just a dream. His smiling face and voice indicates that the dream was in fact just a dream, nothing to worry about. However, in this moment in the film, the line is changed. He hesitates, looking at Jean with both fear and calculation, as if deciding how much to tell her. This is the first time we see the other side of McAvoy's Xavier, the one that comes into play in Dark Phoenix and The Last Stand, the man who is capable of manipulating people for what he thinks is their own good. However, Brian Singer states in the audio commentary that Charles refuses to tell her the whole truth about her power because he knows it would terrify her, and I quote, she would run away. This immediately makes his hesitation feel parental, as if he is desperately trying to protect someone he cares about the same way a parent would do for their child. The deception suddenly becomes tragic. The next few lines show a snapshot of Jean's impatience, her fear, the way she feels a dark power growing within her. It's not just the mind reading or the telekinesis, it's something else. Obviously some foreshadowing for the eventual Phoenix Force. Her words, I thought I was getting better, indicate the continual fear and frustration we see in so many of the mutant characters in this saga. However, unlike Iceman or Raven, there is no sense of pride. There is no faith in her power. She only fears them for the harm that they can cause, therefore putting even more blame on herself. This makes Jean inherently human in this moment. For how many times have we chosen to put the blame on ourselves instead of something that is out of our control? Charles tries to comfort her, and we see the flow of understanding between them as he tells her how he used to be haunted by other people's thoughts. It wasn't so long ago that I was plagued by voices myself. All their suffering, all their pain. This is probably a very significant moment for him. It's unlikely he's ever told anyone this before. However, nothing compares to the final moment in this scene. This moment is probably the most touching out of the entire movie. We have seen Xavier vulnerable before. We went through his pain and torment in Days of Future Past. We saw him make the heroic decision to face his injuries and give up the ability to walk and his peace of mind, both for the future and for Raven. 
However, this moment when he gets out of the chair to comfort Jean is the first time we have seen Professor X willingly show this much vulnerability, to shake off the prestige and power of this great mind, and all to help someone who is in need. Except it would be, until Dark Phoenix made it weird. This scene screams of a beautiful father-daughter relationship, which, like I said, is a side to Charles and Jean that we haven't really seen before. However, it is the final line of this scene that has always stuck with me, that has always transported this scene from good to great in my eyes. Charles tells Jean, Everyone fears that which they do not understand. You will learn to control your powers, and when you do, you'll have nothing to fear. Even though this is intended as mentoring, or even parental, a few final words of comfort or encouragement for his best student, his surrogate daughter, it doesn't feel reassuring. We know she will play a part in the war with Apocalypse that is to come, and though we could not predict at this point how the film would end, with Jean unleashing all her built-up power that Xavier has been telling her to control and suppress, we would know that Jean will eventually succumb to the Dark Phoenix Force, one way or another. This final line reeks of menace, for we, the audience, know that Jean has everything to fear. So there we have it, a scene that may feel like exposition or filler on the surface, but when diving deeper, it can tell us so much about the characters. For one brief moment, we are drawn in to explore the character of Sophie Turner's Jean Grey, a side of her we haven't seen before, and witness a glimpse of her possible power. And all of this started from one misdirection. We see our characters in a new light. Jean is young, unsure, and frightened. Xavier is both scared of and for his student, and both of them display vulnerability rarely seen before. From this moment onwards, even if we have to sit through the insufferable romance between Charles and Moira, the tension escalates up and up and up, and climaxes with the scenes of Eric and the death of his family, showing a snapshot of what Jean fears the most, using her powers to hurt and kill people. This scene works as a character moment, an expositional moment, a brief shot at foreshadowing, and it's just beautifully acted, making it, despite the movie's flaws as a whole, one absolutely excellent scene. Thank you for watching everyone, please remember to subscribe, and do check out the Nando V Movies playlist, I have left links in the description box below, and there are some truly fascinating video essays on this playlist, made by some of my favourite creators. Why not let me know in the comments below what your favourite X-Men scene is? Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and I shall see you all across time and space in the next video.